Let me introduce joining us here on the program Patricia Mukhe, editor of Shillong Times, very close observer of these kind of conflicts in tribal areas. Patricia, very good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Mirror Now. I want to begin by asking you, you know, here is a situation of a conflict, a simmering conflict that has flared up. Do you hold the elected government responsible? Do you feel that this situation could have been handled responsibly in time rather than leading to a situation of this nature where already there is simmering tension? And on top of it, for multiple reasons like you and me know, on, on top of it comes the Meiji reservation issue, which has only opened out a new Pandora's box. Well, I don't understand how the chief minister now says that he will uh, fix responsibility on those who have abdicated their duty. The government is the first respondent here because the government should have felt the situation. And why doesn't the government have an intelligence wing of the police or even the central intelligence agencies? Aren't they able to sense that there is this palpable violence in the making? Why did they allow that uh, so-called peace march? You know, you, you have a peace march and then you have 60,000 people out on the streets and you have some of them brandishing AK-47s. So it was intended to cause trouble. And uh, in, the, in the states of the northeastern region, uh, a wise person said, you know, if you want something, you have to create a law and order problem. That's the only way things will be resolved. Otherwise, uh, governments take things very lightly. So I feel personally that the government did not respond on time because this has been on the brew for quite a while. Yes. Since February, when the government uh, tried to survey these reserve forests, mm -hmm. ostensibly to, to bring them under the purview of reserve forests, and then, you know, that is like uh, intruding into the space of the tribes because the tribes or the indigenous people think or believe or have been told over the centuries that forests or any land, in fact, belongs to them, mm -hmm. which is why they hold uh, custodianship of 90 percent of Manipur, which is the forest area or yes. the hills, as we call it. Yeah. There are already, and you mentioned one of them, there are already a, a quite a few issues, pending issues, which have not been resolved. You mentioned the issue about forested area, the reserved area, which often gets intruded, creates conflict. There's the poppy seed, the poppy cult cultivation issue. Manipur uh, CM wants to crack down on uh, the prevalence of drug abuse. That issue also hurts the, uh, you know, certain sections of the society. They're angry over it. There is the issue of immigrants coming from the uh, other countries, from bordering countries, taking their space. There is a disproportionate division representation of the hill and the valley in the assembly. That is a pending issue. Population and the area which you explain. Again, the hills have the larger area with fewer population, whereas the valley people have a smaller area. Now, all of these are already uh, outstanding issues, unresolved. On top of that comes another one. But why, what I want to ask you here is the level and extent of displacement now, Patricia. If you look at it, where have you heard? I mean, within the state, there is evacuation happening from hills to valley and the valley to yes. the hills. Yes. Where, where else would you see such a situation, animosity between two ethnicities? Well, these two ethnicities have never really learned to live together. And in, I have to include the third ethnicity ethnicity which is the nagas yes so they you know it's it's all right to have different uh, tribes in a state but the this you know the dissensions between these tribes uh, for for a long time the stated position of the nagas is that the kukis do not are not indigenous to manipur that they have come in from myanmar which, which graphics be chalao, they... from yeah. erstwhile burma so uh, you know, this, this, and then there was that huge conflict between the Nagas and the Kugis in 1998. We, I think we should all remember that. So this time, if you look at the situation, the Nagas somehow have remained very quiet. They haven't given their points of view. Uh, so again, you know, there is this balancing, balancing act. Now, now comes the ST uh, inclusion of the Metis in, in the list of STs, which came in um, April. Now, we can understand the, 
you know, the, the, the aspirations of the Maites to be in that category only because they would have the benefit of being able to buy land in the hills. Right. Because as of now, they are not tribals, and so they can't buy land in the hills. And they're just sort of uh, located in that 10% of land in the valley. And then look at the irony here. All of the institutions of governance, all of the institutions of learning, whether sports or agriculture or medicine, they are all located in the valley. Hmm. For the longest time, there are no institutions of any kind of excellence in the hills. So there's this huge divide. And now we talk of normalcy returning. Today, apparently the state has said to the Supreme Court that normalcy is returning. If normalcy has returned, why are people then wanting to get out of the valley? You know, hordes and hordes of students and other workers are now wanting to get out because they see that the situation is not going to normalize anytime soon. That is the worrying part now that how do you resolve something like this? It's obviously going to be, uh, you know, from all accounts, a long term uh, plan and, you know, solution that has to be worked out. It's not something that you can just quell overnight. But Trisha Mukhim, really appreciate your joining us this evening. No, I want to say one more thing. Yes, I want go to say ahead. Go ahead. Please. Hmm. Uh, you know, the uh, promulgation of Article 355, I think this is the first time ever hmm. that we have had this article being uh, being promulgated in any state. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's used in a state of emergency. So was there that kind of emergency hmm. for use of Article 355, for removal of the sitting DGP, for bringing in a, a person from outside? Yes. You know, see the security situation how did things come to this pass we need to question all this how mm. were they allowed to come to this pass how mm. were uh, weapons looted from 35 police stations these are questions we in the media need to ask you know who allowed people you yes. know rivals, mobs to get these weapons to brandish them the way they want and to just go go on a killing spree and where are the peace committees we are in a in a region of turmoil and yet we do not have a, a peace institution we don't have training on peace building the elders have not come those out those groups to used to peace. exist patricia if you remember those civil society groups the student groups used to exist somewhere they have been silenced now we don't see them active anymore. That's again another unfortunate part. We, we could go on for a lot longer, but yeah. unfortunately out of time. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us here this evening.